All right, we are live. This is Jack from teachingeslonline.com and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about monetization on both YouTube and now Instagram. And hopefully all of this is working okay. I haven't done any live streaming for months and it's quite difficult to do. There's a lot of technical aspects to it, but hopefully it is working okay. So I've got a couple of articles to share for you and I'm just going to talk about this new feature from Instagram or a new direction that Instagram is taking when it comes to rewarding their content makers on their platform. And it's interesting to look at because I think I'm seeing a lot of social media platforms now try to push monetization. I think this is going to be a real big trend over the next year to 18 months. And we've already seen it with YouTube. So I'm gonna share some of the ways that you can earn using YouTube. And then we'll look at the um, Instagram uh, new feature as well. Now I'm just gonna turn down the volume a little bit just to make sure everything's working okay. If you wanna know what I'm using for this, it's OBS, a Sony A6400, and then using an Ultra Studio Mini Recorder to connect everything together. And I put my mic over here because the computer audio was a little bit too loud. Uh, come say hi in the live chat if you're watching live. Let's just go straight into this because I'm gonna share, firstly, see if we can do a nice little transition. Oh, you can see my stats there. I'm gonna share, firstly, how to earn money on YouTube. And I've just turned one of these featured features on recently, but we're just gonna go over these briefly. And then we're gonna look at an article which is going to talk about Instagram and what they're doing to roll out monetization features. So firstly, how to make money on YouTube. Now, I think this is a really important topic because as creators, we want to be able to monetize what we produce and I am now looking at ways to use these platforms to get direct payment. My business model has really relied on online courses and sending people from social media to my courses. But as these platforms are rolling out new monetization strategies, I'm very interested in this and I'm gonna push it a little bit more. Firstly, ways to make money in the YouTube Partner Program. So we'll look at these briefly and then I'm gonna talk about the requirements for these two. The first one is advertising revenue, display, overlay and video ads. Now, I put display ads on my website a few months ago and how much does it bring? I'm not gonna talk numbers here, but just know it's good, but you can't rely on it. And it obviously depends on the size of the platform. I get about 70,000 people a month coming to my website. So quite big numbers in the, the total scheme of things. But in order to really make that worth its while, you need to have much bigger numbers than that. Um, I'm just trying to think about a way that I can have a look at the comments. I am going to pop this out. Pop out chat, perfect, okay. And then go back to this and then I can just bring up the chat over the top. All right, it's been a while. Advertising revenue, okay. And then this is when you monetize your channel for, for ads to show on your channel too. I like this. Um, I've had them on since the beginning. What's been interesting this year is that we've seen CPMs drop, but very recently they've gone up again. And I think that this is because people are moving away from Facebook to advertise on YouTube. There's this whole thing going on at the moment. I don't get into the politics side of it, but just know that certain advertisers are pulling ad revenue away from Facebook, but they're still, they still want to advertise. And I think that this is going to YouTube because I've seen a big, a 25% increase in CPMs just yesterday. It was flat. 25% jump, so that's good, it's, it's great to have. The next one is channel memberships. And I think that YouTube are really gonna push this this year. This is your members make recurring monthly payments in exchange for special perks that you offer. Now the membership model has been big in the language learning, language teaching, just 
educational space in general. So people like to have membership programs where you sign up for special perks. And you can also think about things like um, Subscribestar and the big one, I can't think of what it, Patreon, where people on YouTube have sent people to their Patreon to give them special perks. But just going straight through YouTube makes it much easier. I turned this memberships on recently, and I'm just gonna check, but what's frustrating is that they don't, at the moment, the join button isn't on my mobile um, website. Now let's see if this will work, if you can see this, if it's gonna focus. So this is my YouTube channel. It's picking up the face there. But this is on my phone, it says subscribe but it doesn't say anywhere for you to join. And even if we turn on a video, there's no join button. And that's something that will probably come on in the next few days, hopefully. But if you go on the desktop version, you can see it. So I'm not getting a lot of people joining for that reason. And I'm not sure how this is gonna work over the long term, we'll see. Um, Patrick is here from Lima, Peru, very cool. Spent some time in Lima in 2007. The next one, merchandise shelf. Your fans can browse and buy official branded merchandise that's showcased on your watch pages. Now they're pushing this a little bit more. They're trying to do it in such a way to make it as easy as possible for people to buy merchandise from your YouTube channel. Now I've spoken to a few creators. This is not a money-making uh, option very minimal, very minimal. Even big channels, people say, I haven't had any sales or I've had a two t-shirts. And I think it just depends on your brand and, and who people are that follow you and if the merchandise is any good. Now, the merchandise now has, they've created this new brand, I think it's through Teespring and they've just done this link through YouTube. So then you can, you don't have to do a lot. You just upload your designs, do a few caps, t-shirts, and then people buy from Teespring and then you get a commission for this. The next one is Super Chat and Super Stickers. And I find this very interesting. Speaking of Super Chat, feel free to send me a Super Chat if you're watching live. Um, but no, I, I see a lot of people, especially in the news space. For example, Tim Poole. He is a, a YouTuber who has two YouTube channels and he goes live every night. And if you watch these Super Chats come in, it's... Along the lines of $100, 50, 10, 10, 100, 100, 100, 10. And I'd love to know how much it is by the end of the night. He streams for a long time. I guess it's, it's over 2,000, probably around $3,000 a stream. He's getting massive numbers. 35,000 35, people watch live. Um, I haven't been live for a while. I've got seven at the moment. So obviously, I'm not going to see those numbers. But with my other channel for YouTube, for sorry, English learners, I could build it up so that maybe 300 people are watching live at one time. And if you make it like a, a nightly or a weekly show and you make it interesting, then people are going to join. So that's something I'm looking at doing a little bit more. Um, the next thing is YouTube premium revenue. Get a part of... Get part of a YouTube premium subscriber subscription fee when they watch your content. Very minimal. Very, very minimal. The majority is going to come from advertising revenue. Now, that is sizable for my channels. It's nice. I love to see this and I want to see it increase. Again, when you're a creator, you want to be able to monetize your content in the best way possible. There's no... There's no need for me to like sugarcoat it and say, oh, it's all about, you know, helping people, etc." Monetization is key because in order to do this full time or part time and make it worth your while, you want to be able to monetize. Now, if you help people, the monetization will come. It will take care of itself. So just to think about how those two things connect together. Hello, new tutor from USA. Good to have you here, GL. Now, when it comes to being able to monetize on YouTube, 
Once you've been accepted in the YouTube Partner Program, you may get access to these monetization features. Ad revenue, you have to be at least 18 years old and create content that meets our advertiser-friendly content guidelines. This is a very key issue at the moment, and that's why a lot of people are moving away from Facebook and looking at YouTube, because YouTube for the last two years, three years, maybe more, they've been stuck in this, this, this whole advertiser um, model where they're getting a lot of pressure, wherever this pressure is coming from, to reduce the amount of content that might be not advertiser friendly, okay? Things are getting a lot more, um, a lot less old YouTube style, and now it's becoming more polished, the content, because they're pushing that content because it's more advertiser friendly. YouTube want to make as much money as possible, and they want to have content creators make content that their advertisers like. And that's why I think that the CPMs are going up now for YouTube. Channel memberships, you need 30,000 subscribers. Um, so that that's obviously something I can't turn on yet for this channel, but I have it turned on for my other channel. Merchandise shelf, 10,000 subscribers. Super chat, live in a country region where super chat is available. Now, I think at the moment, you need 10,000 subscribers just to be on the YouTube Partner Program. Um, they did change it recently, or maybe it's 1,000 subscribers, I can't remember, just to make sure that new channels aren't popping up and it's not content friendly and, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. So, that's YouTube. Um, I'd love to be able to really push this monetization and it's something I'm looking at doing. Instagram. Instagram have joined the game. We're going to look at this now. This is from Search Engine Journal. And it says, has finally made a strong move into wooing content creators by announcing monetization partnerships. These are the details they've released. I don't think it's a strong move at all. I think it's just a testing move because we're going to find out in a moment this is not available for everyone. So there'll be two initial offerings, ads, and badges. Now, ads and badges, ads and badges. This is going to sound very familiar to what YouTube are doing. Uh, they've also noted they will continue to expand their live shopping offering as well. So let's read about IGTV live badges, Instagram TV. There will also be badges sold through Instagram Live, which will be tested next month with a small group of creators. Viewers can choose between three badges ranging in the 99 cents to $4.99. Once a badge is bought, it will show in front of a user's name and their comments will populate higher than others. So this is a super chat. Let's just say it's a super chat. IGTV will not be taking a cut of this revenue at first, but will move to a revenue sharing model in the future. So no, no, um, they won't take a cut at first, but in the future they will. And then the other one is IGTV ads. Ads will be showing and monetized for an initial group of 200 approved creators. The ads will be from larger brand name advertisers such as Ikea, Puma or Puma, Sephora and others. A 55% cut will go to the creators according to Justin Asofsky, Instagram CEO. So only 200 people. Users will only see ads after clicking away from the feed preview to the full screen version. So when there's an Instagram TV, what happens is you can put a preview in your feed and then if someone clicks to go to Instagram TV, there'll be an ad shown. They'll last up to 15 seconds. Unlike what users are used to will, are used to will, unlike what users are used to will, I don't quite get, understand that. All right. Anyway, but when there's an ad in a story, people swipe up. But when there's an IGTV ad, you can just click through. So this is interesting. I think this is going to be, this is, people are going to push this. Or Instagram, let's go back to this scene. Yeah, I think Instagram are really going to push this over, you know, the next few months especially. And 
I think this is great for creators because this competition is is going to be fantastic. Again, creators want to be able to monetize their content. And I'm seeing other sites as well push monetization for content creators. So Facebook. Facebook introduced, I think a year, two years ago, ads, in-stream ads for um, for videos and also support. So like some type of membership style, but it's only for massive Facebook pages. I have 50,000 followers on Facebook or likes, whatever they call them these days. And I did push live or just video in general to try and boost my numbers to see if I could meet the requirements for the Facebook advertisers, but very difficult. You need a lot of views. I think it's 180,000 one minute views in 60 days, which on Facebook is difficult to get if you're not creating that kind of viral content that Facebook likes. So prank videos do very well. Um, obviously different types of memes and stuff like that, but it's difficult to get your videos to become evergreen on Facebook. The more they go into a news feed, they get shared, they get forgotten. Whereas YouTube, I have old videos like um, just one that gets in about 1,500 views every day and it just it's happened for a long time through YouTube search. So that just shows the difference between the different platforms. So on Facebook, it's more you're browsing and something will pop up. It's usually topical, whereas YouTube people will search. They'll find old videos in their home feed as well. And a lot of it comes through um, Google. If your video can be shown in Google, especially the snippets. Oh, Karis is here, English Arts Academy. Go check out her channel. Love this channel. So, so useful for beginners like me. Well, thank you. It's good to have you here. Um, so I, I think there's going to be a big push for these uh, platforms. Another one is Vimeo. Now, Vimeo, I've used it for a long time for my videos inside my membership area. So in Vimeo, there's a way for you to, to take the settings of a video and then only show it on specific pages on your website. So you can hide the content of a course and embed this on your course page and only people inside the membership area can have access to the video and it won't, it won't play anywhere else. But now they've just released, it's like an OTT, over the top streaming platform where you can sell memberships through Vimeo. And it's an interesting partnership because they seem to take on a lot of the regulations, the sales tax, payment processing, refunds, stuff like that. But you receive, it's quite cheap for the basic one, but then the next level up allows you to create your own apps, but they'll do it for you, a branded app on the app store, maybe on Roku, that is very expensive. But it's interesting to see that they're in this game as well to try and push content creators to sell more premium content. So we're seeing it on Instagram, we're seeing it, YouTube have really stepped up their game over the last year introducing super chats and memberships. I don't think they've done a good job with memberships, or at least I don't know anyone who's doing really well from it. But I've started to do it because I see it as more of a long-term play. I think they're going to start pushing it soon because YouTube are looking at ways just to get more money through their platform. That's what they want. They can't rely on the advertiser model completely. They want to see other ways of of monetizing things. And they obviously take a share when someone signs up as a member on YouTube. So those are the things I wanted to share today. Um, if people are around, if you have any questions right now, let me know. Just uh, leave a question in the chat. If you're watching the replay of this, uh, I hope you are enjoying it as well. I'll just let you in on a couple of things I've done to create this. I'm back in the office. I, <laughs> this is a little uh, cool feature. There's a light back there. And then I use, see if I can grab one. I use these, which I think they came with one of my lights that I bought a little while ago. But then it allows you to obviously change the, can you see how the difference is there? To put it over the light there. Changes the light color. And 
my thought was, I had this background over here, but it was falling down and I didn't want to do the whole wallpaper background again. So my idea was to put that back there and then I could just mix it up with different colors. So for the teaching ES online, we've got more of a blue feel because that's the brand color. And then for to fluency, is that a yellow or orange? But to, to do that for uh, to fluency. Maybe I'll use a green for to fluency as well. But I kind of like it. The, the background's a bit boring at the moment. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it, but there's enough separation, I think, to make it somewhat interesting. Okay, I'll leave it there. Again, if you found this useful, please like and share it. And then go into the description because I have a link to my email marketing course, which is completely free for you to take. You have to do it within a certain time limit. You can buy it and download everything, but you can just go through it for free. So there's a way to do that. And this is just gonna show you how you can basically monetize your teaching through email marketing, okay? Because email marketing is at the center of everything. And I'm gonna talk about how you can, or you're gonna learn how you can boost your YouTube view, views, how you can get more subscribers, how you can sell products, how you can build for the future, how you can interact with your audience, all through email marketing. It's at the center of everything I do, and I think it's a, a really useful course. So click that link and get free access to that. With that in mind, thank you again for being here, and I will speak to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.